Hi folks, this is the sixth in a series of our DDT tutorials. And I realized that last time I said I would be doing one on the wireframe drawings, but we're in the process of rethinking all of the drawing side of DDT, and so I thought instead I would do one that I'm calling Smooth Move. You see, we've released in our last two releases of DDT 2D and 3D, we've included something called Power Summation. And I'm concerned that people might use it without fully understanding what it means or what it implies. So, what is power summation? Well, that's a good question. That'd be a great place to start. So, picture yourself on a boat. No, let's not go there. Picture yourself, yeah, standing in front of two loudspeakers. Speakers on a stick, if you will. And if you were to play music through these loudspeakers, your ears would hear the sound from the two speakers and all the other sounds in the room as well. You may or may not be aware that depending on where you stand in the room, the sound is arriving from one speaker before the other one. Your brain sort of sums all this together into an experience. Now, imagine you were to try to measure the sound in the room. You might take a microphone and connect it to some analyzer and take a reading. That reading would again be the sum total of all the sound in the space, with all the phase and amplitude relationships captured. In both cases, you would know some information about the summation at one point in the room, but not at any other point. So if you move to a new point in the room, your brain may or may not register that the sound was different, but it has to be different because the arrival times from all the sources would change. Now if you moved around the room and listened carefully, you would most likely detect some changes, but the microphone most certainly would record them. The relationship between what we measure and what we hear would be a great topic for another tutorial. But today, I'd like to try to address the question, what would happen if you tried to build software that would model what is happening in the real world? Well, you'd have to ask some questions first. You'd have to say, is the real world uh, anechoic, or are we doing it in a real room? And of course, if you do it in a real room, you have to include all of the acoustical parameters of that room, all the reflective surfaces, all the diffusive surfaces, all those the surfaces that are somewhere between reflective and diffusive, um, you'd have to capture a, an incredible amount of detail. And of course, this is remarkably difficult to do. Uh, so a lot of people just make the choice, well, you know what, we're going to go with anechoic because it's, it's a lot easier. With the anechoic space, we don't have to deal with reflected sound at all. So how do we go about doing that? Well, computers can't really think, but what computers are good at is making a lot of calculations very, very quickly. And so what we could do is we can ask the computer to lay out a series of points in our virtual space and, and ask the question, well, what is the contribution from each of the loudspeakers or each of the sound sources at each one of these points in space? And of course, the more points we use, the more calculations we'll have to uh, perform, but the more accurate or the more detailed our map will be. And so the computer lays out a grid, if you will, of points. Now let's consider what would happen if we had a single source, like a single loudspeaker, and we look at this grid and we ask the question, well, at each one of these points in the grid, what is the contribution from the speaker? Well, you know, you can see here that the time of arrival really doesn't matter. The only thing that you need to calculate is really the distance between the speaker and each point. And using that, you can determine how much energy is lost because of the distance traveled. The time it takes is not that big a deal. But what happens if you put two loudspeakers into the model and ask the question, how do they sum at each of these points? Well, now time becomes very important. Let's take a look. If we consider this point here, we see that the sound from this loudspeaker gets there before the sound from this loudspeaker does. Now let's imagine that the delay, or the difference in time of arrival, is 0.5 milliseconds, a half a millisecond. And let's imagine that we put a signal of 100 hertz sine wave into each of the speakers. Now the period of 100 hertz is 10 milliseconds, and so 
this 0.5 or half a millisecond is pretty insignificant. So yeah, the two will arrive slightly out of time, but not enough to cause any significant cancellation. And so we would simply add the two signals together and we'd get a 6 dB increase. But what would happen if we put a thousand hertz into the system? Well, this half a millisecond delay now becomes significant, doesn't it? Because the period of a thousand hertz is one millisecond. A half a millisecond delay, that's delaying the signal by a half of a wavelength, that's 180 degrees, and we know what happens when you try to combine two signals that are 180 degrees apart. You get nothing. You get complete cancellation. And so now, of course, that 0.5 milliseconds means something. Now, of course, this is a very simple explanation. In the real world, with complex signals and, and not perfect loudspeakers, and of course reflections and so forth, you can see how this could get very complex very quickly if we had to add up all of the phases of all of the arrivals at all the different frequencies and so forth. This would be quite a heavy amount of calculation. And some would argue that although this is accurate, it may not be necessary. Do we really need all that information? Do our ears need all that information? Do our eyes need all that information to help us design better sound systems? So, somebody had the bright idea of ignoring phase altogether. Now, when you do that, three things happen. One, the program actually speeds up because the calculations are much simpler. Two, the coverage plots look much nicer. But the third result of that is that you might lose some information which might be helpful in the design of sound systems. So these plots that ignore phase are called power summation. What we discovered pretty quickly is that our competition was very fond of using power summation. And their plots look prettier than ours. And we were losing jobs uh, to people who would look at their plot, look at our plot, and say, wow, yours looks ugly, theirs looks pretty. Let's go with theirs. And so after much debate, we decided that we would include power summation as well. However, unlike many of our competitors, we give you the power of turning off power summation or, more accurately, the ability to turn on the phase calculation and actually see uh, with greater detail what's really happening. So, DDT actually gives you three levels of resolution in the coverage map. In the second part of this tutorial, Smooth Move Part 2, we're going to be looking at how to use these different levels of resolution when you design a sound system. See you next time.